uh, I figured I'd make a video about a piece of software I found that I thought was really cool because in my off time in between my streams, I like to look for new broadcasting software, new plugins, new services that allow me to produce, I feel like, a better stream or more, better content for you guys. Uh, so what I found was a piece of software called Mashira. So I'm going to show you here. Now, the website looks phenomenal. It sells itself very well. Now, that's probably because it was originally intended to be a commercial product. But when the developer found it to be a bit of a more in-depth and uh, involved process to support for one person, he decided to open source it. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear as though his open source project for it has gained much traction. Uh, there hasn't been a version update in quite a while. Uh, if you go to the GitHub for it, when you go to the project one, you can see the last time it was updated was back in September which at this point has been quite a while. Um, and there hasn't ever been anyone else working on it besides him, one contributor. Uh, so if there's those of you out there who can program uh, in this sort of thing, or maybe if OBS guys could take a look at this and um, use some of the ideas, I think it would be really great um, for a number of the reasons listed on the website itself. So first of all is the interface. Uh, it looks a whole lot better in my opinion than o both OBS and XSplit. Um, now, uh, this is just kind of a quick overview on the site. I'm actually going to open up the app here in a second and show you a little bit more in depth. But it's kind of showing off what it can do. Uh, it's got some profiles set up for when you, um, or rather presets set up for when you set up a profile. Uh, showing off the different, it can do scene groups and individual scenes. Um, it does hardware accelerated uh, NV. Uh, NVENC um, claims to be lightweight. Uh, it's got like a walks you through setting up how to, you know, the streaming settings. Um, and I do like the way it has its audio set up in comparison. Um, so they have an active Twitter, well, rather an inactive Twitter, um, but it's made by Polyflare. Uh, his Twitter, he's uh, rather quite active still, but he's moved on to other things at this point, it appears. Um, but if you want to be, if you're interested in getting on it, I would definitely tweet this guy. Um, and let's see if we can't get uh, something rolling back on it. But anyways, let me launch it and show you. So here's something real quick I threw together, um, just using my pre-existing assets. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've got um, two scenes down here, intro and game. Uh, I was able to use the same uh, art that I already have in the, my webcam um, that I use when I'm only streaming uh, to set this up. So as you can see here, there's uh, the main group. It's actually a scene group. Uh, and each of these are individual elements underneath that. Um, what I also like is down here, you can see that there are uh, actual uh, transitions. And you can set the duration. Uh, you can choose them. There's, there's some presets down here. But it makes it so that, so if you fade, it makes it so that it actually fades into, in between, uh, which I can't speak for XSplit. I don't use it all that much. Um, but in OBS, there's a workaround to do it, but it's quite a kludge. And as you can see here in the game scene, uh, same thing. I'm using my pre-existing assets. I didn't throw everything in here because I'll probably never stream using this. Uh, but you also notice as I'm speaking, you can see that uh, it's up over here too, which I think is really nice, kind of how it splits these out. Excuse me. And over here, uh, I've actually got a... a scene that controls the top and the uh, the box around my webcam that you can enable disable individually or as a group same thing for the live content um, you can rearrange which does set um, the order on the actual scene because if you notice I but if I put the line con live content or put the background below the live content my webcam is now above the box um, but th that being said there are some, uh, we'll say shortcomings, um, given it being a single developer app um, and not uh, fully developed, I guess that that would be the case. Um, for instance, let's go to webcam. So we've got some nice settings over here. It'd be nice to have these in uh, OBS for sure, but at the same time, uh, at least I couldn't find it um, without a quick search. There's no way to, there appears to be no way to like crop the source um, and on top of that, based on 
the size. It's got like these bars. It doesn't actually, you know, the, the doesn't snap to the size of your content, which is a little strange, but you know, different app. Also, it's it's kind of cool because um, your actual canvas for the stream or videos is that there. You can kind of zoom in and out. Um, it has a ah, shoot, of course I'm gonna forget now. Here we go. A there we go. A center button here. You can zoom in, zoom out. Um, and you can see I've got a profile set up for local recording, profile set up for Twitch. Uh, and these are some nice uh, stats here that'd be kind of cool to see. Um, broadcast time, number of viewers, um, kind of the more technical stats if you had any drop frames, uh, big ass broadcasting button. Um, other than that, there really is not a whole lot uh, to the setup here. And even there's no like settings or anything like that. But I'm gonna step you through real quick how to set up a new profile. Uh, so we do, if we do create new, let's call it new. Um, and so you've got two options. You can do quick, complete, completely blank, um, or you can go through their little tutorial or uh, guide rather. Uh, so we'll hit next. So you choose where you want it to go. So we'll choose local file, uh, target name, local. Uh, and they've got uh, two options. They got MPEG-4 and MKV. Um, I'm not actually sure what would be the benefits of MKV or MP4. I do know that on OBS, people suggest you use FLVs because if OBS crashes while you're recording MP4, the container file won't be closed and it'll, you'll lose uh, your video essentially. Otherwise, you just choose where you want to record it to. Uh, and then here, I think that this would be one of the areas that could be improved for sure uh, because it kind of seems to try and make it for people who don't aren't super technical, which I think is good. But at the same time, I haven't seen a way thus far to really get down to the nitty gritty too well. Um, but essentially, it's like, oh, you know, do you want to use little CPU? Do you want to use, you know, medium amount of CPU or just fucking punish my CPU? Let's do it. Uh, but anyways, I chose the middle of the road. Just it seemed like the most reasonable. Um, and then it kind of benchmarks your computer. So there we go. Uh, sped that up a little bit for you guys, but you'll notice during the time my little uh, CPU uses meter went all the way to 100%. Not exactly 100% sure uh, what it's using to benchmark that, uh, but you'll see it's got a recommended setting. Now keep in mind this is for offline recording, so it suggests 1080p 30fps at 15.6 uh, megabits per second, great quality, and gets around 34% CPU usage. So you can click next. Uh, now this is my part. I think where he did a really good job to kind of uh, give you a place to start. So you're like, oh, I already know how to use it. I can do a blank scene, or they give you a tutorial scene, which is really great. So you choose that, hit next, and it's like, hey, you're all set up, it's good to go, thanks for using it, uh, you know, for more information, website, manual, which actually is blank right now. You hit finish, and there you go. We've got a fresh new um, scene set up, and I'm not going to walk through it fully again, but it just kind of walks you through each scene, you know, walks you through the tools to be used for making your own scenes. So uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can go back up here. Up here, you can modify uh, a little bit more technical with what you want to hit. Uh, you can modify and set, you know, if it didn't quite hit what you want to, you can increase the bit rate, that sort of thing here. Um, would allow you to, you know, set your own custom targets and produce the kind of video content you want. Uh, so I just thought that would be cool to show you guys. There's other streaming applications besides XSplit and OBS. This is one of them. Probably wouldn't suggest you use it for streaming right now, but I might give it a go one stream just to kind of see how it performs in comparison to OBS. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you on the next one.